welcome back. My name is Matt and in this third CAD-ARM training video on how to use Adobe Premiere Pro, I'm going to introduce you to the final stages of editing. This is when you add finishing touches such as titles and transitions. We're also going to look at video effects. I'm going to show you how to add a title first, but before we do that, let's duplicate our sequence. Let's call this one Fine Cut and open it in the timeline. Now in Premiere, a title is treated as a piece of media just like a clip. That means we have to create it in the project window. As always, there are several ways of doing this. You could go up to Title on the menu bar, and there you've got New Title, and there are various types of title to choose from. The basic title is a default still. You've also got defaults here for moving titles, this one crawls across the screen from left to right or vice versa. And this one is like a credit roll with the words rolling up the screen. For the purposes of this video, we're just going to stick with a standard still title. The other thing you can do to create a title is to right click on the space in the project window and select new item and then select title. If you want the keyboard shortcut, it's control T or command T on the Mac. I prefer the right click option. So let's create our title that way. So right click and select new item and title. Now what you get is this new title window. The video settings should be correct to match your sequence. So you don't need to worry about that. All you need to do is give it a name. I want to put this title at the beginning of my video. So let's call it opening title. And press OK. And what happens is a new element is created in your project window. And you can see it here. At the same time, this title designer window opens. This is where you can create your title and what's showing in the viewer in the background is just whatever your playhead is over on the timeline. This is because by default, titles have see-through backgrounds. I want my title on a black background, so I'm going to move the playhead to a blank area on the timeline to see what my title is going to look like. Now to write some text, you need to select the type tool, which is the T button here. So if you click on it and then click anywhere within the frame here, that creates a title box where you can type in the words you want. I want to call this edit the interview. So let's type that out. Now I want to change the font to something simple, especially as this font makes my capital I look like a J. You can do that here in title properties where it says font family. So let's try Arial, which is a nice clean font. It's best to keep titles as simple as possible. That's why I would advise you to ignore the title styles offered down here at the bottom. Most of them aren't very nice. There are loads of other things you can do here under the title properties. One thing you'll no doubt want to do is change the size of your font. And you can do that here. And the numbers work in just the same way as they do in the effect controls window. So let's make this text bigger by adjusting the number here. And that's about right. And you can also change the color of your text here where it says fill. This white box is showing the colour of your text. So if you click on it, the colour picker window opens. This circle marks the colour that's selected. So if you click elsewhere to select a different colour. And drag these arrows up and down this column to change the hue. It's quite fun to play around here, but as I said, it's always a good idea to keep things simple. So staying with the default white is probably the best option. So let's press cancel here. Moving down, you may find shadow useful because this adds just a little shadow behind your text, which makes it stand out from a background. This is particularly useful for subtitles, which need to be readable when added to your video. And this here lets you add a background to your title so that it's not see-through anymore. If you click on this small box, that turns it on. The default is black, but you may want another color, maybe white for instance. So let's click on the color box and change that. Now I've got a title with a white background and the default colour of the text is slightly off-white so we can still see it. But if you're using a white background you're probably going to want to make your text black. So let's do that by clicking on the colour box under fill and selecting black. I still prefer white text on a black background so I'm going to undo these changes now by pressing Ctrl Z or Command Z on a Mac. So those are some of the things you can do under title properties. So now if we go back to the other side of the viewer and click on the arrow, which is this selection tool, you'll notice that the box around the text changes. The lines have little squares on them now, and this tells us that the box is adjustable. So if you click on one of these little squares, you can change the size and shape of the text. 
and if you click on the box and drag, you can move the whole thing around. Instead of trying to position your title by eye, you can use these very helpful buttons down here, and they'll centre the text box for you. And this, this button here just centres it on the horizontal axis, and this one on the vertical axis. There now my text is in the centre of the screen, and I'm quite happy with that. Before we move on, it's worth noting that you should try to keep your titles within these title safe margins. With most videos being viewed online these days, these margins aren't actually that relevant anymore, because they come from the days when televisions cropped the full image, so you had to be careful where you put your titles. But they are still good as a positioning guide, and titles look better on the screen if they are within these borders. Now, I've designed my title, but I still have to put it into my sequence. So all you need to do is close this window, and find the title in your project window. Before dragging it onto the timeline, let's do our housekeeping again. This title should go into the Other Elements bin, so let's put it in there now. Now we can drag it onto the timeline. I'm going to create a third video track by dragging it onto the empty space above Video 2. There's a good reason for this, and I'll explain that later, but in general, keeping different types of elements on different tracks is a good idea because it helps keep your timeline tidy. The way we've layered things here is a good model to follow, with our interview on track 1, our additional visuals on track 2, and our title on track 3. Titles have a default length of 5 seconds, but you can change the length to whatever you want in the same way as you would edit a clip. The length should depend on the contents of your title and your pacing. The main thing to do is to make sure your audience will have enough time to read all of the words. So this title here lasts a bit too long, so I think I'll just shorten it. You can also change the text you've already typed in whenever you want. You just double click on the title, either on your timeline or in your project window, and the title designer window will open up again, like this. OK, so now we've added an opening title, but there are lots of other types of titles you may want to add to a video, such as name titles, subtitles and rolling credits at the end. Before we move on, I just want to add another title to my sequence, and that's a name title. So to do that, instead of creating a new title from scratch, I'm going to duplicate the title I already have, and do some redesigning. You can duplicate titles in the same way as you would duplicate sequences. Right click and select duplicate. Now we've got another title, and so we can just rename that. But I'm going to call this one name title and double click on it to open it up in the title designer. Name titles go on the lower left or right hand side of the screen when someone you want to identify appears. They should give the name and any other relevant information about the person, and they're usually only needed the first time you see the person. Because of their position on the screen, these kind of titles are often referred to as lower thirds. I need this name title to identify my interviewee, so let's put the playhead over that clip to help us design it. First let's type the text we want. I'm just going to make up a name here. How about Hawkeye Smithy? Then press return to go down to the next line, where I want to put his job title. Let's just type in Super Kitman. OK, now I can't see my interviewee. That's because I've got the background selected here. So let's turn that off so we can finish designing this title. Now because Hawkeye's head is on the right hand side of the screen, it's standard practice to put the name title on the left hand side of the screen. That means we'll want it aligned to the left. You do that by pressing this alignment button up here. The text is way too big of course, so let's make it smaller over here where it says font size. The other thing I want to do is change the leading. That's how far apart the lines are. I think we need a bit more space between them, so let's do that here where it says leading. Now to position the text. Make sure you've got the selection tool selected. Drag the text box down to the left hand corner. You can use the margins to help you. There, that's about right. And that's it, a nice simple name title. You don't really need to do anything more. 
although I will be adding to this title later on in the video. Now let's put it into our sequence, so if you close the title designer, find the title in your project window and drag it onto the timeline. We want to put it where we see the interviewee for the first time, and as before, it should go on track 3. Now we need to lengthen it, so that it lasts long enough for your audience to comfortably read. In this case, the first interview clip isn't very long, so let's lengthen the title to run right up until we cut away to the camera clip. OK, so now we've added two titles, and that's about all the elements I want in this edit, although we will be adding some music later on. What we need to do next is make things flow a bit more, so if I play the beginning back, you can see that it starts too abruptly. What we want to do is to avoid anything that jars the ear or the eye. Editing shouldn't attract attention to itself, the aim of it is to be invisible. So we need some transitions to smooth things over. Transitions are visual or audio effects, like fades. We'll talk more about audio transitions in a later video, but for now we're going to look at visual transitions. The key thing about visual transitions is to keep them simple and use them sparingly. All you really need to do is to add fades when you're moving from or to black. That means we need to add one at the beginning here so that the title doesn't come in too abruptly. Premiere offers quite a lot of ready-made transitions for you to use, and they're all here in the effects window. As you can see, there are quite a lot of bins here, and they're all full of all sorts of pre-made effects. We'll be coming back here to look at a few more things later on, but for the time being, all we want is the video transitions bin, so let's open that up. We've got quite a few bins in here, holding various types of transitions. Unless there is a very good reason for using a fancy transition, I recommend ignoring all of these apart from the most basic of them all, which is here in the dissolve bin. The one we want to use is the cross dissolve transition. It's outlined in yellow because it's essential enough to be connected to a keyboard shortcut, which I'll introduce to you in a minute. To put this effect on the timeline, what you need to do is click and hold on the icon with your mouse, and drag it to the ends of the clip you want to add it to. In this case, I want to add it to the opening title. Transitions only affect your clip's in and out points, so don't try adding it to the middle. As you can see, as I hover the, over the beginning of my title with the transition, it changes colour. If you just release the mouse, and there you go, the transition has dropped into place. Now let's play it back so you can see the result. And that's a nice smooth fade in from black. By default, transitions are only a second long. You can change the length by clicking on the out point and dragging back and forth, like this. Now there are a few more transitions I want to add. To start with I want the opening title to fade out to black, and then I want the time lapse to fade in. Let's try using the keyboard shortcut this time. First you need to position your playhead between the two clips, which is where we want the transitions. Let's not forget to select video 3, now we've got something on that track. My playhead is right on the edit point between the two clips now, which is where I want to add my transitions. Now press Ctrl D or Command D on the Mac. And there as you can see, Premiere has actually added the transition to both the clips because we've got both Video 2 and Video 3 selected. This saves us quite a lot of time, and let's see what that looks like. That looks about right. If I had the title on the same track as the time lapse, I wouldn't get this fade in and out effect. What I'd get is a cross dissolve. I just want to show you that now. So let's delete the two transitions I've just added. To delete, all you need to do is click on the transition to select it. As you can see it changes to a green colour, and then you can just press delete on your keyboard. You could also right click and select clear. And now let's move the title to the same track as the time lapse, and add the transition again. As you can see, the title now fades away as the time lapse fades in, and you can see both together. This isn't as elegant as fading to black. So instead of using a cross dissolve, what you need to do is use the dip to black transition. So let's just give that a go. And there that works. As I said, for neatness, I prefer keeping different elements on different tracks. This also gives you greater control, especially over things like transitions, but let's just leave that as it is now. 
I also want to add a transition to the beginning of the name title so that it comes in smoothly. But before I do that, I just want to adjust the start point of the name title so that it starts when the time lapse finishes. If the name title ended before the interview clip did, I'd also need to add a fade out, but it's not necessary here because it just ends before the next clip. So let's drag the cross dissolve transition over to the start of the name title. There. So the CADARN Learning Portal has provided its partners. That's all the transitions I really need here. There's no need to add transitions at the edit points between shots, such as here where the camera clip comes in. That would just draw attention to the cut. People are used to seeing clean cuts between shots. If the cut is a good one, it will appear smooth and won't jar the eye. If it does jar the eye, don't add a transition and try to fix it. The cut needs to be adjusted, not covered up. I will need another transition at the end though, to fade out to black. I've got this seaside clip here because I want to give our little edit an elegant ending, and this clip will make a good outro. The smoothest way to do this is to cut to the seaside clip before the end of the interview, so that it plays while the interviewee finishes speaking. So let's position it on track 2, over the end of the Russ interview clip. And let's just edit the interview clip a bit, as the very end is not needed. And I want to shorten the seaside clip a bit. To fade out to black, instead of adding a pre-made transition, I want to show you another way of achieving the same effect. So let's just expand the track here. Now, what we're going to do is create the fade out manually by animating the clip's opacity using keyframes. That sounds complicated, but you'll see how easy it is. Opacity is how see-through the clip is. At the moment, this thin yellow line running through the clip indicates its opacity, which is why there's opacity written here. The clip is currently fully opaque, so opacity is at 100%. If you hover your cursor over the line, you'll see the arrow icon change. You can now grab the opacity line and pull it down. These numbers appear to tell you what percentage you're at, so let's try an opacity of about 50% and release the mouse. Now the opacity of the clip has been reduced so you can see the clip below showing through it. What we've just done is change the opacity of the whole clip. We don't want that. We want a change to occur over time. This is a sort of animation and it's achieved using something called keyframes. So let's return the opacity back to 100% by dragging the line back up. Then click on the button here. And as you can see, as I hover over it, it says add remove keyframe. So let's just click on it. And a dot appears on the yellow line where the playhead is. And that's the keyframe. We need to add another keyframe at the end of the clip so that a change can happen between them. Let's skip to the end and press the button again. Now if you click and hold on the second keyframe that we've just added, you can drag it down to zero opacity. You can also move the keyframe backwards and forwards. Make sure it's right at the end of the clip by dragging it as far to the right as it will go. And as you can see, the yellow line now slopes down showing a change in opacity over time. And that's the animation. So let's play it back. Lots of different types of content. Now you can see the fade out, but there's an obvious problem. Instead of fading to black, the clip below is showing through. We don't want to get rid of this interview clip because we want its audio. We could unlink the video from the audio and trim off the end of the video, but as we're working with keyframes at the moment, let's use them to solve the problem. Let's add two keyframes to the clip, just as we did before by pressing the keyframe button. And let's pull the second keyframe down to 0% opacity before the seaside clip starts fading out. So let's try playing it back again. Of different types of content. There, now I've got a clean fade to black on the top clip. To make this fade last longer, 
All you need to do is pull the first keyframe back so that it starts earlier. Or you could make the clip longer and adjust the end keyframe. But I'm going to leave it as it is because that's long enough for me. Just so you know, if you want to delete a keyframe at any time, just right click on it and select delete. Now, using this method to fade out may seem rather long winded, but there's a good reason for introducing you to keyframes. They can be used to animate much more than just opacity. Down here on the audio tracks, they can be used to change volume at various points. And on the visual side of things, they're also essential for two basic animations you'll no doubt want to use at some point. Changes to position and scale. If you click on this little arrow here, next to the word opacity, you'll see all the things that can be changed using keyframes here on the timeline. If I were to select scale, I'd get a yellow line through the clip that represents its size, and I'd be able to add keyframes to that just as I did with opacity. But animating scale and position here on the timeline can get a bit tricky, so it's actually easier to do it up here in the effect controls window. To show you what to do, I'm going to add a subtle zoom in on this seaside clip. What you can see here is the whole of the clip as it is in the sequence. I want to expand it a bit so that it's easier to work with. You do that by clicking on this border line and dragging it, like this. Now you can see these two dots on the opacity line. Those are the keyframes we've already added. I want my animation to last the whole of the clip, so we need to make sure we're right at the beginning by pulling the playhead over. There, now we want to add a keyframe that affects scale. To do that, just press this stopwatch icon next to the word scale, and as you can see, as I hover over it, it says toggle animation. That just means turn on animation. So if you click on it, and that adds your start keyframe. Now if you move the playhead to the end of the clip, and simply make the change you want to happen. I want it to zoom in, so I need to increase the size. So let's make a big change, so you can see the effect. There's the second keyframe. It appeared automatically when I adjusted the numbers. So now let's see what it looks like. That's a really obvious zoom in. Sorts of different types of and if you watch these numbers as it plays back, you'll see them counting up. Sorts of different types of content. I think that's too big a zoom in, so let's make it a bit more subtle. To do that, we're going to have to readjust the second keyframe. We need to position the playhead at the end of the clip. Make sure the playhead is exactly over the second keyframe, otherwise a third keyframe will be added, which will mess up the animation. Now we can readjust the scale. OK, that's going to be less of a zoom. Let's play that back now. Lots of different types of content. You can use the same method to make a change to the position here. Animating both scale and position can have a powerful effect. It's especially useful when you're working with still images and you want to make them more interesting by adding a bit of movement, or if you want to draw attention to a particular part of the image. Before we move on to work on our audio, I want to introduce you to some of the things you can do to adjust your visuals by adding video effects. Let's go back down to the effects tab and open up the video effects bin. As you can see, there are loads of pre-made effects you could use. It's quite fun trying all these effects out, but you'll probably end up only ever using a handful. To teach you how they work, I'm going to show you two key effects now. The first one is called Crop. This allows you to cut the shape of a clip down so that it only takes up a proportion of the screen. I'm going to add the effect to this name title because I want to put the words on a background but I only want it to take up a small part of the screen. So first things first, let's add a background to the title. So if you open up the title designer, scroll down and select background. As you can see, the background fills the whole screen covering up the clip underneath. That's why we need the crop effect. Now let's close the title designer and return to the effects window. Because there are so many different effects, it can sometimes be hard to find the one you want. So instead of looking in all of the bins, let's just do a search for crop up here. And there it is in the transform bin. To add the effect to your clip, all you need to do is drag it over to the timeline and drop it on your clip. So let's just do that now. We've got the clip selected on the timeline already, so it's showing the effect controls window. Just watch what happens when I drop the effect on. There, as you can see, a number of new values have been added here. So by adding an effect, what you're adding is the ability to change certain parameters. There are other ways of adding an effect. If you've got the clip selected on the timeline, 
you could also double click on the effect or drag it up to the effect controls window and drop it there. What I want to do is crop the title down so that this background colour only covers a small proportion of the screen. Let's start by cropping the top by adjusting the yellow numbers as we have done with the other parameters. There, now we can see Hawkeye again. Let's crop the bottom and the right as well. Now the words are sitting on a smart black tab, which makes the name title clearer and more formal. Just to remind you, if you want to turn off an effect, all you have to do is press this little effects button. Press it again to turn it back on again. With added effects like crop, you can also delete them. Just select the effect and press delete on your keyboard. This is something you can't do to motion and opacity because they are fundamental to the clip. Let's just undo that delete now because we do want to keep the title background cropped. Control or Command Z, there. The other effect I want to show you is color correction. Color correction is for adjusting things like the color and brightness of your visuals. At a basic level, it's about making sure each shot looks natural and matches the other shots in a sequence. At a more advanced level, color correction is termed grading and it's about giving your visuals a certain aesthetic look or mood. Working with colour can get very technical, and there's a huge amount to learn here. I don't want to go into anything technical in this video, but I do want to show you some simple adjustments and make you aware of the possibilities. So let's return to the effects window and get rid of our search for crop. Open up the video effects bin and look for colour correction. As you can see, there are loads of effects in this bin but I found I can usually do everything I want with just three of these, the fast colour corrector, RGB curves and the three-way colour corrector here. For basic correction, a good place to start is the fast colour corrector. So let's add this effect to the interview clip. If we select it on the timeline, we can drop the effect into the effect controls window. There. Now let's adjust our workspace a bit so that it's easier to work on this effect. It's especially helpful to make the program monitor bigger, like this. Then you can see what you're doing more clearly. And if you want more room for the effects parameters, so you can make more detailed adjustments, you can press this little arrow here, so that they take up the whole of the window. The fast colour corrector does add quite a lot of parameters, but we're only going to look at three of the basics now. So let's start with the input levels down here. This is where you adjust brightness and contrast, which is the first thing you should adjust when you're working on colour correction. Brightness is controlled using this slider in the middle here. If I put it backwards and forwards, you can see the image becomes darker and brighter overall. These two sliders at each end of the bar affect the contrast, which is how much black and how much white there is in your image. If I move the black slider up, more areas of the image become black. And on the other end, if I move the white slider down, more areas become white. Adding a bit of contrast can make your image pop out a bit more, but you certainly don't want something this extreme. So let's play around with all three of these sliders to get a nice, clean look. Just a small amount of contrast on the black end and the white end, and let's make it a bit brighter overall. There, now that looks good to me. Now let's go back up now and look at the colour wheel. This is for adjusting the overall colour of your image. It's useful if the shot has an unnatural colour cast or the white balance is slightly off. White balance refers to the colour of the white in your shot, which is different in every situation depending on the colour of the light. The colour of the white is the base against which the camera measures all other colours when it shoots a scene. To make changes to this colour wheel, simply grab the circle in the middle and drag it round. As you can see I'm making quite drastic changes to the colour of the shot. What we should be aiming for is a natural look so any changes we should make should be really subtle. So let's return to the middle and try again. Looking at the white wall and the background, I'd say this shot is slightly too yellow, so to counteract that we need to move the circle away from yellow, so that's towards blue. So I'm going to make very minor adjustments here. And there you'll see that looks better. The other basic adjustment you can make is to saturation. Saturation refers to the colourfulness of your colours. 
It's really a taste thing and should depend on the nature of your video. If it's serious, for instance, you may want to add a more washed out, desaturated look, whereas if it's something fun, you may go for stronger colours. From a technical standpoint, the only thing you want to avoid is making it too saturated. So let's open up the saturation here and make some adjustments with the slider. You can see how different the shot looks as I drag the slider up and down. This is very desaturated, and this is oversaturated. I think it might be nice to add a little bit of saturation to this shot, just to give it a bit more punch. There, that's about right. Now let's see what we've done by turning the effect on and off. That's what the shot looked like before, and that's what it looked like with our colour corrections. If you want, you can see this shot both with and without the effect applied at the same time. If you just click here where it says Show Split View, now the bottom half of the screen is showing the original shot, and this top half is showing what it looks like with the effect applied. If you want, you can split it vertically too, by selecting Vertical here. You usually have to do some kind of colour correction on every shot in your edit. Luckily, if you're using lots of shots from the same scene, you can copy the work you've done on one shot to the others. Just click on the effects name in the Effect Controls window, and press Ctrl C or Command C on the Mac to copy, and then select the clip or the clips that you want to copy to onto Timeline. Now press Ctrl or Command V, and the effect with all the adjustments you've made will be added to the clip. Now we've done all this work on our visuals, it's time to take care of our audio. That's what we'll be looking at in our next Premiere Pro training video.